Hello, uh, welcome to Baiju's 12th board series. Uh, we are going to uh, discuss about the important uh, topics, uh, basically in the chapters of magnetism and matter, then electromagnetic induction, AC and electromagnetic waves, right? So one of these sessions are already over. So if you are wondering about what are the important topics in uh, electrostatics and uh, potential and uh, moving charges and magnetism, so you can go watch that video. And here we are going to talk, talk about topics I just told you. Uh, let's start with uh, the first one, which is uh, uh, basically permanent magnets, right? That's what uh, I mean when I say magnetism and matter. So in permanent magnets, uh, uh, one very important, see, you know that the core of this chapter is about uh, paramagnetism, diamagnetism and ferromagnetism, right? So the one best thing is that you start making, like you make a table uh, which compares uh, all the three, the properties of uh, uh, diamagnetic materials, uh, ferromagnetic materials and paramagnetic materials and uh, in, uh, under electric field how do they behave, under uh, magnetic field how do they behave and uh, what, what is like what is the the spins of the electron uh, the, the magnetic moments look like and so all these details because see most of times you are asked questions which are very comparative right so you have to uh, you have to keep things in perspective of, for all the three uh, of these type of materials then uh, talking about permanent magnets uh, you have the concept of uh, magnetic intensity you have concept of magnetization and magnetic susceptibility. So you can expect like a one marker or two marker question uh, asking the definition of, of these things. Or uh, sometimes they can also ask you a very simple numerical, but mostly it will be a two marker uh, based on this. So those things you can expect for permanent from permanent magnets, it's, uh, it doesn't carry very great percent uh, weightage uh, for your boards. But like uh, if a question is asked, uh, it's not always good to know how to answer that because uh, there is not because there are only fixed number of differences which which are there in diamagnetism, ferromagnetism, paramagnetism, and all that. Then one important topic uh, in permanent magnets uh, is uh, the hysteresis, right? The hysteresis graph that you draw. Be very clear about how to draw that graph, and uh, you should be uh, you should be able to like. Uh, identify what you have on the x-axis, what you have on the y-axis. You should be able to write of three, four lines about magnetic hysteresis. What does it mean? And what does it imply? And all those things, right? So, see, the general idea about writing board exams is uh, the, the core is something I've been telling again and again is that there's this is not like JE, this is not like a advanced or mains or any other examination where you have a machine reading your answers here a human being as you know some teacher would be checking your answers so they are prone to human errors in the sense that uh, even if you write a right answer and but if you mess it up too much and you're you, you are not very clear then uh, you might lose marks so be very clear in writing your answers always supply your answers with an example and a diagram wherever possible even if you think that you can sneak in some kind of a diagram or an example whatever comes to your mind right you just put it there because uh, it is always better to write something extra than you know be hanging in this doubt whether i should have written that or not so from uh, from the chapter of permanent magnets those are the things uh, you can expect then if i talk about uh, electromagnetic induction electromagnetic induction is a very interesting chapter they can ask you very simple questions uh, one markers would include like what is uh, what is magnetic flux you can they can ask a question like that or to state uh, faraday's law uh, in couple of lines you can state what faraday law says then uh, in a two marker question they can ask uh, about lenz's law they can ask uh, from where does lenz's law arise right and uh, very simple numericals, three marker numericals can be asked from, from here uh, about like uh, there's a loop and there's the magnetic field is changing over the loop and uh, because of the change in the magnetic flux, how much EMF will be developed and if it has a resistance, how much current will, will be. So very simple numericals you can expect from electromagnetic induction. Uh, they usually, uh, uh, commonly repeated, uh, a commonly repeated uh, question is about the electrical generator, right? So you can you, you you can go and learn uh, about electrical generator and always uh, whenever a question of electrical generator is asked, draw a diagram and show uh, how it works. Okay, 
if you, you can also draw a block diagram so whatever uh, comes to your mind you can uh, you know just draw it in the sense that you supply you should should look that you have done multiple different kinds of things okay yeah it does sound uh, kind of cheesy but like yeah that's the way it goes uh, with the boards okay so uh, those are the topics electrical generator uh, lenses law and there's another topic in electromagnetic induction which is uh, which is uh, motional emf right motional emf is when uh, when you have um, a, a, a metal bar or something which is moving uh, in a magnetic field then what happens you you there's a charge separation and you get this uh, motional emf bvl right so you can ask you uh, formulas for bvl you have to remember that all the three have to be perpendicular so those kind of questions can be asked. The simple numericals can also be asked from uh, from uh, from here, right? Motional EMF. So that is uh, about EMI. There is uh, from EMI also there is not much, okay. But again, a couple of questions can always be expected from this chapter. Then you have AC. Another chapter. Uh, I would say that the weightage of this chapter is not too much, but. Uh, but you can expect uh, a five marker question from AC, uh, you know, they can ask you a numerical. So in AC, basically what happens is you have, uh, basically the first thing is you, you need to know what is RMS uh, current and RMS uh, potential difference, the potential, right, the EMF and all that. So the formulas for that and uh, uh, like there are different kinds of circuits you have, you have LC circuit, LR circuit, right, LCR circuit. So uh, one uh, point of suggestion if I would want to uh, give to you is that uh, you make uh, like again like comparative uh, notes you have like three columns for LR circuits LC circuits LCR circuits and like how uh, things uh, work with LR circuits and what is the lag or what is the lead that you get in each circuit right so all those things you should you should write in a separate table and always learn it in a comparative way because it is easier to remember okay Remember that I have 12 points and if any one of them, if you are supposed to answer, if the question asks for any one of them, you can answer that. But if they ask for a comparison, you can, you will always be uh, ready to compare. Okay. Then uh, in AC, you have the idea of impedance. Be very clear with the idea of impedance because the numericals are based on the idea of impedance. You should be very clear with how to draw a phasor diagram, right? And how to identify what is the phase of the final, uh, final, like whatever it is, current or voltage. Uh, you should know that uh, uh, in an inductive circuit, current leads voltage or voltage leads current. All these ideas should be very clear in your mind uh, when it comes to AC, right? Uh, then uh, in AC, you have uh, LC oscillations. So LC oscillations is also a topic which is uh, asked for. And in, in fact, I think you can expect a three marker or a five marker from LC oscillations. LC oscillations and resonance and they can also ask you what are what what are the uh, uses uh, of resonance or real life applications of resonance right for example it is used in uh, radio broadcast and all that so and uh, they ask you for this resonant how to calculate the resonant frequency that can also be a theoretical question and sometimes they also ask numericals based on that so they can ask questions on resonant frequency also so these kind of questions you can expect from here, you can expect a question of what is bandwidth. That is also a very commonly asked question. It's a one marker, two marker question they can ask. Uh, so that is what we have from the chapter of uh, alternating current. Uh, then we have electromagnetic waves and uh, electromagnetic waves is a very small chapter. You basically need to know what are some properties of electromagnetic waves that they don't get reflected by the electric field or magnetic field. And it is basically elect, uh, electric field and magnetic field oscillating perpendicular to each other and the, and the wave is uh, moving perpendicular to both of them. And in, uh, in well, in boards, they don't ask much about uh, uh, the Maxwell's equation, but uh, they can ask a little bit about induction current, okay. So induction current is something they can ask, the current which get induced because of change in uh, electric field. So these are the questions you can expect from this chapter and uh, overall I would say that uh, these four chapters are, uh, are the kind of chapters where you know uh, individually I would say the chapters don't hold that much weightage except for EMI which would be like comparatively a little higher but like the thing is even if on the last day see AC is something you need to uh, the numericals of AC need some preparation uh, definitely. 
see permanent magnets electromagnetic waves okay these two chapters are very theoretical chapters okay so i would say suggest that uh, if you are preparing prepare this in the last because with theoretical chapters what happens is most of the thing is has to be in your memory it is not m much of a practice so if you do like uh, electromagnetic waves or uh, permanent magnets in the, in the very beginning and then by the by the time you learn other things and you forget this then it kind of beats the purpose so electromagnetic waves uh, and permanent magnets i would suggest you do in the end then do it properly make small notes uh, short notes and uh, write down the differences as i said write down the properties of electromagnetic waves in fact i would say suggest that the one thing if you're writing boards is you have to do which you from which you will gain much more than what you would gain from this session or anybody telling you anything is solving old question papers okay pick old question papers and start solving them and see the pattern in which the questions are asked and you'd see that although there is a pattern but that pattern is not always followed right so you cannot just say that i i think like i will learn only these particular things in this chapter you have to learn everything and you have to learn how to write uh, problems in a really good manner if it's a three mark question so at least write three to four line don't be like one line although it is an exhaustive line i understand that that line itself might be like something which is enough to tell uh, everything which you know about that topic but again you have to thrust in a couple of lines there so that uh, it looks like it's you have we have made some effort okay yeah yeah it is silly but yeah you have to do that if you if you want to get good marks uh, for boards okay and uh, as i said draw diagrams don't forget that especially in emi draw diagrams even in for permanent magnets you, you can draw the domain diagrams and all that for ac you can draw diagrams you can draw the graphs always draw the sine curves and all that uh, for electromagnetic waves you can draw a diagram showing like uh, an isometric view of the electric field and the magnetic field them being perpendicular and in phase and the wave mo moving uh, perpendicular to the direction of both right so this is it basically uh, it, the important topics uh, uh, in these chapters um, there are usually people make mistakes uh, in in the numericals of ac because uh, they are not very much familiar with how to use uh, phasor diagrams okay so this, i already told that phasor diagrams are very important with phasor diagrams be very clear about which is your base vector and which is the other vector and what is the angle the initial angle between them and when the final thing comes what what it is making angle with the base base phasor not vector base phasor right so all those things you have to be very clear about and uh, uh you understand that the idea of resistance which you have been learning in electric current gets um, extended to an idea of impedance uh when you when you come to uh like this uh, ac okay uh these kind of questions you can uh, you can expect uh, from from these chapters i i don't see any extraordinary uh, suggestion which is required here uh, i see that uh, uh like any any regular chapters you you prepare these chapters in the same way except for the only the core suggestion which i want to give you is like learn permanent magnets in a comparative way which i have repeated i think couple of times already and the same thing i would suggest for uh, ac for different kinds of circuits all right uh i can uh, i can go ahead and take some questions now uh in which concept numerical of ac current may be asked so pratik is asking this question so pratik uh, in ac you can uh, expect a question where they are uh, asking you to find the impedance uh, for an lcr circuit or for an lc circuit so you should know how to find impedance and uh, what is the general formula for for finding impedance the root uh, root over that a square plus b square that formula you have right xc square plus xl square then the xc minus xl the whole square that formula okay and you also learn how to find the how to find whether the current would be lagging or voltage would be lagging and that that is something you find using the phasor diagram so if it, if you practice with a couple of problems i think you would be able to understand so uh, basically uh, you'd find questions are asked from here uh, sometimes they ask you to find the rms value rms value finding is not very difficult sometimes they ask you to also to find the power which is de delivered okay so these are like the very very basic uh, questions are asked from ac uh kolacharan is asking uh, please tell which are important topics i think that's what learned that this current carrying loop is sort of behaving like a magnet okay because magnets repel magnets right 
So we learned that this current carrying loop is behaving like a magnetic dipole. It has a north side, it has a south side because what I did is like when I was bringing the north pole towards this, it was repelling. But when I bring the south pole, it would attract. Okay. So we learned that if you use your, so this is a rule which we de developed after doing experiments that if you use your right hand and you curl your fingers in the direction of the current, the thumb gives you the direction of the north pole. Right. So this is the magnetic, magnetic dipole. Now, the same concept gets extended in permanent magnets also, but in permanent magnets like in electric dipole you have a plus q charge and a minus q charge separated by distance. In permanent magnet uh, you have a magnetic monopole and a magnetic uh, like positive monopole like a north side and, and the south side like ne negative. That These are hypothetical ideas by the way and separated by some distance in the same way dipole moment is defined as it was defined uh, in case of electrostatics. Okay. Uh, but realize that uh, magnetic monopoles do not exist, right? Uh, they exist in theory, by the way. Uh, it was something which was uh, predicted by Dirac and uh, many scientists have predicted that they must exist, but we have still not found them in nature. Uh, collection is asking alternating current. I just told you about alternating current. Then uh, Suravanshu Yadav is uh, asking what is a lodestone? Uh, don't uh, see lodestone is nothing but uh, the ore from where you get iron okay so uh, hematite magnetite these are ores from where you, they are very heavy okay so this is where where you from where you ex extract iron and basically this hematite which is fe3o2 uh, fe2o3 and then you have magnetite which is fe3o4 magnetite is uh, naturally occurring uh, magnet okay so when it was first discovered uh, in the town of uh, Magnesia or something in Magnetia, uh, I think in Greece, so they called it lodestone. I think it comes from some Greek word. All right. I think if you read NCRT, you you know this is this is a historical trivia. Nothing much to do with science there. Uh, please tell something about IAC. Uh, See, IAC boards, uh, the good thing is you don't have to write long answers. So please uh, learn uh, the topics. Uh, you have to go much in, in detail in every topic, right? So you have to like, uh, uh, because I, I myself from that board, so I know that uh, just knowing how to answer wouldn't, wouldn't do. They would give you a diagram that they ask you to label that and all that. So there, instead of focusing on how to write well, you should focus on like really, really understanding each and every part of the problem, right? Uh, Vitish Basu is asking, what is magnetic susceptibility in the angle of dip? So, yeah, this is one thing uh, I wanted to discuss that, uh, see, uh, in uh, in magnetic, uh, uh, in magnetism and, and magnets, I, uh, I forgot to tell one thing is that another kind of question which is asked, which is a, again, not a very difficult thing is, uh, Earth's magnetism, right? Earth's magnetism is also not very frequently asked question, but they ask this question. So in Earth's magnetism, you should be clear about the dip, the inclination uh, of uh, uh, what is the what does it mean in context of Earth magnetism? The dip, the inclination. So so this session because it is short, I am not going to explain magnetic susceptibility because it itself will take me at least ten minutes to answer. But I would again in this point suggest you to download our app and you can go through our videos where. Uh, these things are very beautifully described with animation okay out of these four chapters which has uh, more weightage uh, I would I've already answered that EMI has the most weightage okay so, so and someone is asking is uh, permanent magnets important for CBSC boards yes permanent magnets are uh, important for CBSC boards but not very important though you can definitely see the thing is if it if they ask you a one marker question then you're going to lose mark. So if they ask you a question which is either or, then you find you can answer some other thing. But you have to do this chapter, right? If you want to score good marks in boards, don't be like I can skip this chapter. You have to do every chapter. Okay. So this these sessions are more about how do you answer your questions and which topic uh, in what way you have to prepare and all that. But not about like what should I study because for boards you have to study everything. Okay. So I think uh, uh, we're we're done. Uh, and I would suggest you to again uh, download our app and uh, because this is a good time to download our app because uh, you can go through all the videos because I think for, a, for some time we give it for free and you can check out everything and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can find very interesting videos uh, and uh, 
keep up with us because uh, I think tomorrow also we are going to have a session uh, on the same.